In the world of computer graphics, most developers at some point are forced to make an important decision. Which graphics API are they going to specialize in? Though this choice doesn't seem that deep on the surface, it dictates a lot more than people realize. For example, if someone were to choose to be a DirectX developer, they're now bound to the will of Microsoft and the unique experience that is Windows. If they choose Metal, they now have to conform to the all-powerful Apple ecosystem and bow down to the will of Apple Silicon. If they choose OpenGL, they get happiness and sanity at the cost of performance in all job prospects. And if they choose Vulkan, they're now given cross-platform freedom and a somewhat justified superiority complex so long as they can survive the thousand-line Vulkan triangle. It didn't always used to be this way, though. Back in 2010, you had two real choices, OpenGL or DirectX 11. There were a few console-specific APIs as well, but the general graphics programming scene was not nearly as specialized and segmented as it is today. Not only this, but the available graphics APIs were much easier to use than the modern graphics API standard. Wait, what the... What happened? So how do we get back to the simpler time? How can we develop software in an environment where the API you choose comes with maximal creative freedom and minimal overhead constraints? The easy answer? Use an abstraction layer. Come on, man! That's too easy! Just to make sure we're on the same page, an abstraction layer, loosely defined, is a layer of code that sits between an app and the APIs or frameworks being used in the app. An abstraction layer attempts to simplify interactions with the underlying APIs or to allow for a code base to target multiple APIs through a single interface. In terms of computer graphics, abstraction layers allow the programmer to target multiple graphics APIs through a single backend. Oftentimes, however, features specific to certain APIs are lost in the abstraction process, like how mesh shaders aren't yet supported fully by WebGPU due to some of its APIs not fully supporting the feature. So, should you use an abstraction layer in your app? If so, which one should you use? Let's start with the first question. Depending on how you answer the following questions, you may or may not want to use an abstraction layer in your app. Firstly, do you need to target multiple backends quickly? Maybe your app needs cross-platform support, or you just want to support Vulkan, OpenGL, and Metal, or any number of APIs, and you don't want to write all of that boilerplate code. Well, you may want to use an abstraction layer to target different APIs depending on which platform you're compiling for, or just depending on what the user has preference for. Two, do you want simplified interactions with modern graphics APIs? Working with an abstraction layer is usually much easier than working with a modern graphics API since they handle much of the bloated boilerplate code for you. Life like this sure is sweet, huh? It definitely is. This can make for an easier development process as you can skip out on writing possibly thousands of lines of setup code. This ease of use, however, does come at a cost that nicely transitions into my third question. Question three, do I care about losing extreme, complete hardware control? Oftentimes, abstraction layers strip away API-specific features in the name of simplicity. One example is how WebGPU does not support mesh shaders, despite the fact that many of the APIs behind WebGPU do support mesh shaders. If you don't need these features, it's not a problem. But if you do need these features, that may be a deal breaker for using abstraction layers. But Michael, you absolute chad of a junior developer, you ask. What abstraction layer should I use? Well, my dear junior developer, you're in luck. Here are some of the common graphics abstraction layers that people have used in their apps and some of the common features features and drawbacks that come with them. NVRHI, NVIDIA's graphics abstraction layer. This framework, while missing some API backends like OpenGL and Metal, really shines in terms of control. You can have access to hardware ray tracing on both Vulkan and DirectX 12, while also being able to target low-end Windows hardware with DirectX 11. If you want access to most of the modern rendering features, and you don't mind missing out on some low-end hardware, and you also want a slightly simplified interface, NVRHI might be a good abstraction layer for you. BGFX, the battle-tested veteran. This framework is one of the many backends behind Minecraft Bedrock Edition and targets Vulkan, Metal, DirectX 11 and 12, OpenGL, and WebGL. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. From what I can tell, BGFX provides an easy-to-use, high-level interface that lets you target almost any platform, albeit at the cost of fine-grained hardware control. If you need a framework for rapid prototyping that comes with minimal software overhead, this may be the abstraction layer for you. BGFX also does allow for browser-based graphics using WebGL, but it is severely lacking in terms of features when compared to the next item on our list, WebGPU. WebGPU supports almost all of the major API backends and is supposedly meant to unify the graphics programming ecosystem under one shared framework. That, however, remains to be seen. The graphics API cults are not easily dissolved. WebGPU is usually used with JavaScript to make cross-platform browser-based graphics graphics, but has C++ and Rust bindings to allow for desktop apps as well. It uses its own shader language, WGSL, but there are compilers that allow you to write GLSL or HLSL code and convert it into WGSL. 
While it is missing some specific features like mesh shaders and some hardware ray tracing functionality, its cross compatibility is hard to beat. Very few abstraction layers target desktop and the browser equally. If I had to list one major drawback, its C++ integration is very young. You really feel its youth between limited learning resources, a very demanding project setup, and very, very long build times. If none of these options suit your needs, don't feel discouraged. I only gave you a few popular examples, and there's tons of other abstraction layers available. If you really want a challenge, you can write your own abstraction layer and have a custom-made framework to use in your future projects that you can share with other developers too. The collaborative nature of software engineering is one of its best traits, so be sure to use it and contribute to it whenever you get the chance. I hope this video was in-depth enough for y'all. One of the main criticisms I got on my last video was how simplified it was. To be clear, I'm not an expert, nor am I an experienced developer. I'm an aspiring engineer who loves software and wants to share what I know about it with others. If you have any other topics you want me to cover, please leave a comment. I'm always looking for new video topics. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. The YouTube algorithm has been very good to me so far, but that only continues with your guys' help. That's all for this video. I'll hopefully see y'all again soon.